Goedemiddag allemaal. Welkom in de Bali. Uh, mijn naam is Absaline Herhakaya. Ik ben hoofd cinema in de Bali. Um, laten we eerst even een rondje doen van wie welke taal wel en niet spreekt. Um, wie spreekt er geen Engels, maar wel Nederlands? Nee, jullie zwaaien gewoon, toch? Ja. <laughs> Oké. <Okay. laughs> Arabisch? Alleen Arabisch. Oké, okay, sorry. It's, the after talk is going to be in English. And uh, before we start the film, uh, there's going to be a homage to uh, Basim Youssef by uh, Sadri, Sabri Saad El Hams. Um, after the film, directly after the film, uh, Basim will join us. And uh, we will start the Q&A. This will take about 30 uh, to uh, 45 minutes. And I'm really looking forward to all your uh, questions. I've prepared some myself. Um, so you can catch your breath after the film. Uh, Basim is not watching the film because it's too intense for him uh, to relive it all. He has lived it already. Um, furthermore, I would like to point out uh, there was supposed to be a book selling, but we weren't able to get enough books uh, here. So I bought the books that were available in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if you would like to buy one, uh, um, just come to me after the screening and uh, we will figure something out. And we will reward a book to uh, the best question from the audience. So uh, keep those wheels turning uh, up there. Um, <laughs> me and Basem. <laughs> but don't be too scared. <laughs> um, I would like to uh, give you all a, a warm applause for uh, Sabri Sattelhams. يا مساء العسل زيك طبعا بنبدا بالعربي اه والمصري بالذات اهلا بيكم انا اول مره يعني كانت هيل كوردون فور ذا دامس ان هي اللي خير عربي سبريك اوف فرستان كانت هيل ايك هيبت نو نويت سو مي او او وقت افه عربيس أنا أول مرة أشوف التجمع الكبير دوت المصريين الحلوين، أنتوا قاعدين كلكم في هولندا ولا إيه؟ مش فاهم، أنتوا فوق صحيح؟ ومش باينين ليه طيب؟ مش باينين ليه؟ إحنا عايزينكم. أوكي، دعم سنهيرة، فيلكم. إت ساو إن هوماج زين عن نيت ألين عن باسم يوسف، ماي عن هيومور. Ik speel een voorstelling en het gaat niet over mij, maar het gaat over de voorstelling en over wat de voorstelling eh, zegt eigenlijk. Het is een voorstelling van Arne Grunberg, eh, een bekende schrijver in Nederland, en misschien van de bekendste. En hij heeft een stukje daarin, ik speel een stukje daarin over humor. Wat de mens eigenlijk eh, is voor... Hij probeert, het is een advocaat die probeert het op te nemen voor de mensheid en zit een stukje in over eh, humor. Daar ga ik mee... Eindigen. Maar ik wil eigenlijk beginnen met de eerste kennis maken met het programma Het Programma, zou ik maar zeggen. Bernemik, El Bernemik. Uh, toen ik in Egypte in, in 2011 aankwam, ik was voor een paar dagen onze man in Egypte, bij Paul Witteman en weet ik veel wat allemaal, en ik heb op de Tahrirplein gestaan. Al die 18 dagen, eh, of nou niet, de laatste, de laatste drie dagen van die 18 dagen heb ik daar gestaan en gefilmd. En eh, kort daarna is er een, een programma in het leven geroepen, of althans werd ik geconfronteerd door een neef van mij die zei van nou, je moet kijken naar uh, Bessem Youssef op, uh, uh, op de televisie. En ik kon dat in iedere hoek van de straat zien. كل الأهاوي كانت من جماعة برة والناس بتشرب شيشة ومش ما كنت شايف إن الحاجات دي يعني كانت ألمة فن فوتبال في الاستراحة. Als El Ahli en El Zemelik tegen elkaar speelden, of als Egypte of als de het WK was, dan zag je dat soort tafereelen. Maar zoveel mensen op straat kijkend naar een politiek getint satirisch programma hadden wij nog nooit meegemaakt in Egypte. En ik durf te wedden dat wij in Nederland dat ook niet hebben meegemaakt. Ik kan me niet voorstellen dat voor zondag op, of nee, hoe heet die man? Uh, Lubach op zondag. Uh, de Bali vol te krijgen valt, uh, terwijl hij heel veel, heel veel uh, kijkers heeft. Maar het was zo belangrijk. En het, is, het stemt mij alleen, uh, hoe zeg je dat, treurig eigenlijk, dat het er niet meer is in Egypte. En ik ben heel erg benieuwd na dit het zien van, dit, van, van deze film en het praten met Bessem straks wat de toekomst dan zal gaan brengen. Wat jullie ons te vertellen hebben. 
jonge mensen zoals jullie. Arbi, me oh. انت مش فاهم حاجه خالص من اللي انا قلته ده كله يا نهار اسود ولا كلمه ابيض اوكي ولا هولندي ممكن انجليزي طب بعد بعد العرض بقى لان كده هتاخد وقت كتير هترجمها لك كلهم هترجم لك انا الكلام ده والله وعد ان شاء الله انت اسمك ايه ماشي يا كريم وعد ان انا بعد بعد البرنامج هترجم لك كلمه كلمه اوكي The man is the clown from the schepping. <laughs> the man is the clown from the schepping. Ik weet dat er een paar practical jokes uit de hand zijn gelopen. Er is wel eens een onschuldige slachtoffer gevallen omdat de verkeerde grappen serieus werden genomen. Terwijl de grappen die men juist serieus had moeten nemen als een grap werden afgedaan. Je neemt het lachen pas serieus als je bereid bent ervoor te sterven. Ik bezing het enige wezen van de schepping dat de lach boven alles stelt. Ik bezing het enige wezen van de schepping dat met recht op zijn grafsteen kan laten zetten. Hij leefde voor de lach. Hij ziet er geen. En ja, niet. Dat is het zaap er geen. Dat is het er geen. Moeskille, moeskille. مشكلة ما أهم حاجة إن أنا يعني مضمون الموضوع اللي أنا اللي مقدمتي ديت إن أنا بعمل بعمل يعني ب ب باك جراوند انفورميشن عني ومش مش لا أقصد إيه أنا أنا بعمل مسرحية عن واحد من 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 نص واحد اسمه أرنون جرينبرغ وعملنا مسرحية عن حتى يعني عن 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 الهيومور أو ايه هو the importance importancy let's say my English of of humor and how important that was and is still for humanity actually and I was talking also about how how I discovered the Bernamik El Bernamik when I was in Egypt in in you remember that in yeah January 2011. And uh, I discovered actually by a family member of me who, who, who told me that I have to look to the best uh, music Bernamic and how important that was and how crowded the, the tea houses were in Egypt at the streets, looking, watching this very important uh, program. That's actually what it's all about. And then I said something about the performance. Which I'm not going to translate, but maybe I will be able to do it later this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, Sayyidati, Ani Sayyidati, Sayyidati. Ik ben vereerd en ja, ni saïd gidden, 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 bil lqa maqoum dalwati, wa nana akoum magoud, wa nana akoum magoudi maq baad, wa yarit nataraf ala baad, baad el e, baad el film, yarit. Shukran. You came. <laughs> In the midst of our summer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so first of all, how many how many Arabs are here? Yeah, yeah it scared the shit out of white people, yes. That's nice. Every all the, uh, uh, any Dutch? Yeah. It's kind of like you heard like the Arabic, hey, it's like what the fuck? <laughs> Like what's happening? It's like next time when I say like, hey, it's like, Allah, but it's like everybody's like, <laughs> anyways. Uh, hi, thank you so much for coming, guys. Uh, and I uh, really appreciate it. Seriously? 
Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, it's such a pleasure, and thank you so much. I know that uh, I was just told outside that like there's not many sunny days outside in uh, in Amsterdam. So actually, to, to use that to be inside watching a movie, you're all losers. So thank you so much. <laughs> Should be going outside cycling and killing someone with your, with your bikes. But thank you so. Oh. All right. So. Uh, Okay, let's do it. Yeah, we made the agreement that I have prepared some questions so they can just yes. relax a little bit in your presence. Yeah, and then, uh, no, there uh, we are relaxed. I'm relaxed, they're relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then yes. I will move around with the mic. Okay. Um, so, Basim, um, the film ends, but your life went on. You went to the, the US. Yes. Uh, can you fill Thank us God a it little bit? Thank God it went on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> No, what happened directly uh, uh, after? And well, well, well the thing out? is, uh, I didn't move, but like chronologically, I didn't move from Egypt to uh, to United States. I went for a, a year in Dubai, and then from that Dubai, I went to the United States. And the reason for that is, uh, I mean, Dubai at that time seemed the logical uh, choice because Tariq, my friend in the movie, he actually went there because he couldn't go back because he, his his father and his brother were both uh, taken into custody. So I went there uh, and we kind of, we had this idea of, okay, maybe we should resume our activities from Dubai. But of course, as you know, regionally, it, like the El Bernamek was not allowed to be revived. And uh, I w as I was there, from the moment I, I, I landed there, there were offers for me to go back to television, but in a different form. So uh, you would see people coming in and they would ask me to do stuff like game shows or very uh, easy, uh, um, silly comedy shows that doesn't have any political edge and, and and they were offering a huge amount of money to do that and I couldn't it was just I couldn't find it that would be a disappointment not just for the fans of the show but for me and that would be a uh, that, uh, that would just like destroy that legacy of El Bernamic. Uh so after after a year in there I I, I didn't find it possible to continue in Dubai. So I took the decision to go to the United States and start all over again, which is very difficult because in the Arab world, this is where I formed the, the fame and, 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 and people know me there and it was much easier to get jobs, even like much higher paid jobs. But I, I decided that, which is hard for me to go to the United States, start a career there in, an, in a language that's not mine, for a, an audience that's not my audience with references that are different. And it's a big challenge because there it's the it's already a very a cutthroat competition there. So this is this is the chronological order, from Egypt to Dubai to Los Angeles. And what current, what content are you working uh, with now? Basically? So 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 right now I I um, I have my own live shows where I go there. It's a mixture of um, a storytelling, stand up, and it is directed more to. Uh, American audience and, and immigrant, Arab immigrants who live in the United States. Hopefully, I would want this to be more, more of a comedy special. On the, uh, and that's like what I'm doing currently. Like I do a lot of touring in the United States. But on the side, there's all, if you live in Hollywood and you ask anybody, what are you working on? Everybody's like, I'm working on a project. <laughs> uh, everybody is having like scripts and, and all of this stuff. Every time you see like a breakthrough movie or a breakthrough TV series, these people have been pitching these ideas for years. And uh, this is how tough and how competitive uh, things are in Los Angeles. So, you, so as, you, as I'm doing that, I'm also writing scripts. I'm also uh, involved in, in projects with other people. Hopefully that one day this will, be, um, will make it to the screen. So uh, it is scary, but it is interesting. And, and it's uh, still political satire, right? Not necessarily. No, okay. I mean, but the, but the thing is, everything, everything is political. If you have now an immigrant who would play something on television in mainstream media in, in America, that is political in itself. You know, because the, we are affected by what's happening in, in the world. So uh, my, uh, my goal is to have voices like us being heard in the media. And I get criticized, a lot of people, ah, oh, you don't speak about, like when, you, when I go and, um, and speak in, in these life, uh, uh, life events, like we want to, to hear specifically about what happened in Egypt yesterday. And I said like, guys, this is the reason people do not listen to us. We, d we bitch and whine that we, we, the people in the West don't listen to us because we don't say something that's important to us. They need to be related, they need to relate to us as people living there. So we need to talk about our problems there so people would have 
voices like us being heard in the media. And this is what I'm trying to do. Like, this is like my next frontier. My next hope is to have uh, voices like us being heard in the American media. And it's, it's, it's not very easy. Yes. And um, you didn't watch the film because you, you lived it already. Uh, no, I didn't watch the film because I, I watched the film for the first time in, in the premiere in Tribeca Film Festival in uh, 2016. And I watched it once and I couldn't watch it again. And I'm sure that you felt it. It's very, it's very, it's very traumatizing for me to watch it again. I watch it once and every time there's a Q&A, it's like, when does the movie start? It's like, start at three, right? I'm going to come at five. And uh, because it is very difficult for me to rewatch everything, there is moments there. I'm sure that you would understand it. For me, it's very difficult for me to watch it again. So I just come to the Q and A, pretending that I have watched it with you in the back room, which I didn't. <laughs> and what is your favorite moment in the movie of making? Uh, I said I don't watch the movie. No, but well, well, it, uh, well. The thing is, the favorite mo uh, favorite moments of the movie are actually the bittersweet moments. It's stuff that, like, when you see the movie and you see the, us working mostly in the office when we are working together and creating this every week. That was like a very strong one because, like, I miss. I, I'm, I'm more than I miss the show itself. I miss the the process of doing the show with all of these people that I've connected with. And are you still in contact with them? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they are they are still working in Egypt. Well, they at, at the end of the movie, they, yeah. you see that where everybody is and uh, they do other stuff. Of course, they're not allowed to do political stuff. Yeah. But they um, they still working and they're very successful because like I was very lucky to be surrounded by these amazing talents around me. Yeah. Um, as one of your colleagues says, uh, El Benamek is not a choice; it's a lifestyle, and it's a lifestyle that c came with a lot of um, uh, opposition. It's a uh, lifestyle like yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and. Um, I was wondering, you received, as a Muslim, you received a lot of accusations of being, for example, anti-Islamic on several occasions, both within the public debate and I can imagine also within the personal sphere from family or friends or whoever. And it's, 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 it started by anti-Islamic and then it's then, then anti-Egypt anti and anti-army. They, they will always find something to accuse you from. So, uh, of course, under the Muslim Brotherhood, I was uh, accused until now that I'm a hater of Islam and I hate Islam. And uh, uh, yeah, how did you deal with that? I just made more jokes. And um, <laughs> and, and, and 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 the thing is, like at the beginning, it was uh, it was more of, uh, and I know that you here in in Holland are more sensitive to think of, because it's scary for you. But actually, it's more scary to be accused of being anti-army in Egypt. Army is a, uh, army is even the army is even more sacred than religion in Egypt and and people in Egypt they can relate to this actually because it doesn't matter because I was accused by those people of being anti-Islam from the Muslim Brotherhood who were not very popular mm -hmm. at least for a, a large um, portion of the circles in Egypt they were not very popular there but like once you go the army is untouchable and I didn't even make fun of Islam, I didn't make fun of the army, I made fun of the people who represent these two ideologies and using them in political discourse. So uh, after the, 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 the uh, authority shift and then I, I had, you know, there were pe new people now in power and I had to make, you know, you have to do my job. There are people uh, in, in my circle starting to be aggressive towards me, even people within my family and uh, people boycotted me and uh, they even believed all of the propaganda about me. And uh, in, 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 in the heart of Cairo, there is a, a sports club called Gezira Club. And this is where I would go and do my sports. And uh, throughout the couple of years when I was making fun of the Muslim Brotherhood, I was like, I would go in from, like, from the gate and I, I was a god, you know? <laughs> And then, after you know the, the stuff, stuff shifted, people started looking at me differently, you know, and it, uh, especially old uh, retired people, you know, the, uh, who, who come and you know started wagging their fingers in my face, like you are not allowed to speak about CC, you know. And uh, it was funny, actually, one of the, uh, one of those people is she was like uh, she was crazy, anyways, but uh, <laughs> she would come and say, I remember it's like. Hey, we used to love you under the Muslim Brotherhood. We don't like you now. You should not be speaking about Sisi. So, and I said, why? It's like he is our savior. I said, okay, yeah, but like you need to explain to me why. And he said, she said, well, we have God up uh, up there, and we have Sisi down here. He is like second to God. And it's like seriously, second to God? And I said, yes. Yeah, so okay, what about Prophet Muhammad, first or second? 
All right. He's like, after Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> so, all right, what about Jesus, Moses? Right, oh, okay, after the prophets. All right, what about the disciples? So she got very confused. <laughs> I, I, I like messing around with these people. <laughs> They're so easy. Yes. And um, 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 are you already ready for a question? To be I asked? think so. yeah, we are born yeah, ready, baby. You're super eager. All okay. right, so okay, be, let's okay. have ground rules for questions. Since there are so many Arabs here, <laughs> a question is short, ends in a question mark. It is not a statement. It's not the story of your life. Nobody fucking cares. So ask the question and be thoughtful of the other people here. So make it and, 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 and just like, let's have like a nice conversation and uh, give everybody a chance to ask and uh, let's do it. Yes, you choose. اه واللي يقول لي بقى فين 5 مليار يا بس مكالمه من ده بدي احبطه يعني خلينا بقى لطيف بقى والحاجات اللي بتاعتي ماشي خلينا لطيف باسم يو سيد ذات ون اوف يور فرونتيرز از شوينج ذات وي هاف ا فويس فور ذا ميديا ان ذا يونايتد ستيتس وات وود يو سجست اس از اكسباتس يونج اكسباتس ايجيبشن اكسباتس وانتينج تو ميك ا تشينج فور اور كونتري تو دو Right now. Well, well, the thing is, here's the thing about the change, making the change for your country as individuals. This is going to be like we can we can we can speak theoretically about it, but like seriously, you need to work on yourself to be a better person, a better person, a better individual, a better expert of what you do. Because when your country is ready for you, you can do it. Because like right now, there's I, I have to say I, I will be very honest with you. There's not much that any of us can do, especially that you are dealing with a country that the the military regime is even supported by the same Western country who speak about. Uh, human rights and democracy every day. I mean, and, and I said that in Amnesty International two days ago. I said, like, all of this uh, oppression and all of this tyranny is not created in vacuum. It is created with the aid and with the weapon sales from the Western countries, the same countries who talk about uh, human rights and democracy. So it is very difficult right now. We have regional powers, you have global powers uh, doing that, and actually going and, and facing end on the regime might not be safe. So you have to look first for your safety and you have to look first for how good you are as a person doing the best you can here and when the time is ready we will all know it and we can help our countries. But right now what you can do around your circles you can make them aware. You can tell them that uh, Islamic regimes and, and military regimes are two sides of the same coin. N not, not one of them is radical and the other one is secular. Both of them are radical. Um, do you think it's possible for uh, us Egyptians living in Europe mostly, from a very privileged part of Egyptian society, to be living our lives without also legitimizing the very same rule that oppresses a lot of people in Egypt, while we get away with it a lot of the times. What do you mean, how, do you, how are you legitimizing? Um, if I were to, like, I don't want to put the personal <laughs> thing inside, but if I were to live in Egypt right now, I would be uh, living in a very privileged uh, sector of Egypt and I'm afraid that if I would live my life the way I would want to live it there that I'm giving uh, legitimacy to the military rule I think, <laughs> listen we're not saints we're not angels you need to I mean you cannot just like go and say because if you give up this um, privileged life I don't think that you're gonna make any difference so what you just need to be work and con but like you need just to be conscious of what you are and what you are going through and don't just support it like that that kind of regime so i i think this is more of a a, a problem that you need to talk to your therapist more than me <laughs> so I, I i i cannot give that kind of advice also marriage advice i don't give that i see a lot of people filming there but you know what, you know what they can shout you can shout the questions no no because then they won't be able to hear it online because, oh, online uh, is yeah. this online people can rewatch it I will come back to you in a sec. Hi. Hi, thank you. Oh, okay. Hi, Basim. Hello. <laughs> um, so my question is, did we, as your audience, did we disappoint you when the show stopped? Because I always ask myself, what should we have well, done? Well, the thing is, I guess this question, I mean, so I'm gonna actually turn this question. A lot of people ask me, why don't you continue doing it online? And said, so, like, guys, I had 40 million people on the, on the show watching every day, and when the show stopped, nobody did anything. So 
part of it, people think that I'm saying this as if I am disappointed at you, but I'm not. Actually, what could, have, what could have you done? There is nothing really you could have done. But the fact is, as much as I'm not asking for people to do anything, I, you cannot ask me to continue sticking my neck out, doing the same thing, and doing it online, while we had like a much bigger audience and that didn't make an effect. If I knew that this would make an effect, I would have done it, but it's, it's not. And I have to say that I was broken from the inside, especially last year, when uh, Egypt was giving away two islands to another country, and nobody did anything. So people, was like, Do you th people didn't even move for us giving up a piece of our land. Do you think they will move because of a satirical show? So it's, it's, there's, a, there's a time that you fight, and there's a time that you sit back, getting concerned about your safety, and, 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 and hopefully waiting for, for some other time to, to fight. But that's not the time. So I'm not like, because you don't, you don't owe me anything. You, you, I cannot ask you to do something and stick your, and stick, and you st and you stick your, your neck out for me because I know it's not safe. So it's fine, guys. Just like be safe. <laughs> well, uh, another question on Israel. Yes. Um, so shortly after uh, June thirtieth, uh, how did you feel about freedom of expression in Egypt? Did you expect? Uh, that it will go down this way, or were you more optimistic? Uh, for the first few days, after thir uh, I'm, I was the one who celebrated the removal of the Muslim Brotherhood, I have to be honest. Because I, I, being under like uh, daily threats, I, f I, was f I, I felt that there's like a heavy weight that was lifted up, but I was naive. And so many people like me were naive when they felt that the army can come in, save us and leave. And this is, we, 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 we learned that the hard way. And I think it just, this kind of euphoria took a few weeks, and then we started to see something is very wrong. So, uh, and of course, freedom of, and, and I'm not saying that like, that means that the Muslim Brotherhood were more democratic than the army. The Muslim Brotherhood wanted to be like the army, but they didn't have the tools. They don't, were not, not stronger. It's like you have someone who has like one year of experience, and another who had 60 years of experience who have to be oppressive. So at dictatorship, the army wins, of course. Not because they are better or worse, but just they have more experience in, in putting you down. Uh, we're over oh, here. you're already in the yeah. seats and there. <laughs> this is becoming like a TV show. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay. Oh, here, does it work? Okay, hello? Yeah, okay. Um, I have a new hobby to study the cloud behaviors. So I was just wondering, what do you think about the cloud and the sun and the... <laughs> huh? uh, what's your favorite... What's your favorite uh, like comic like the simpsons these are these are like five different questions <laughs> uh, what is the cloud what is the cloud what is the sun what is the simpsons okay i love the simpsons all right next question there's another one here yeah thank you so away from politics um Bassem, looking at the the program itself technically um i don't want to ask you actually what went wrong but uh, what do you really think could have been better away from politics. Talking only the show, what the show. could have been better, technically? I mean, I think uh, with, here's the thing. Uh, I started as a very small pre-recorded show for the first year. And then I was fighting to get this to be life, uh, as a live audience. And I remember when I was asking people for this, networks to finance it, we were ridiculed. People made fun of us because suddenly we were asking for five times the budget of any TV show. And uh, people say like, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna be a profitable, you're not gonna be shut down. And we did it and we proved to everybody that we did it. So as a matter of fact, technically, I'm actually very happy of the show because if you watch American uh, Egyptian media now, all of the shows now over the live audience, that was not the case before our show. So all of these shows on different channels, whether comedy or not, are now bringing in a live audience. And, 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 and they are now spending four or five times the, our budget. So I think that like, technically is one of the things that I'm very proud of the show. So even because of politically, it's, we cannot have political satire anymore, but the show has changed the landscape of Egyptian TV forever. So this is something I'm really proud of. There's another question here. They won't let me leave. So we, we, we need some of the, the Dutch people to ask. All right, so, yes, so now the next three questions after this gentleman will be Dutch people. <laughs> because I'm being, ra uh, this is reverse racism, yes. So, Basim, about the documentary uh, movie today, uh, I have, uh, uh, speak up. I have one, one question about the, the movie. 
Uh, do you feel that you had to reveal more about the insight of the incidents that happened, like uh, your move from uh, on TV to CBC or the pressure that you had? Because what we uh, we watched in the movie, it's more, more or less public uh, information, but we would love to understand more about the insight. Uh. So this is not an investigative reporting. This is not investigative reporting. This is a documentary. And this is, I didn't, uh, you have to understand that I am not the maker of the movie. You have to understand that I'm the subject of the movie. Big difference. There is a director called Sarah Taxler who followed the story for four years and I had no creative control over what was happening. I saw the movie for the first time like everybody else in the premiere of a, a film festival. So she was telling her perspective of the story as an American bringing this story to the world. So there is a, a difference between doing an, a, an investigative reporting piece and a documentary documenting the events that happened, even if it was public. And if you know it because you're Egyptian, there's a lot of people around the world who do, doesn't know the whole story. So that is a question that, is, that I'm not the right person to answer because, as I said, I'm the subject of the movie, you know. So I'm kind of like if you make a, a, a movie about pluga whales and giraffes, I will be the whale. Or I will be the. It's like making, uh, yeah. It's like. But you it's, had, it's like planet Earth, and I'm a mosquito. But you had to agree to the movie being made. Yeah, what, no, no. What, what yeah, did you but, but in the agreement, yeah. I did not have any creative input. Okay, but what did you? What made you say yes? Uh, because Sarah was working at that time with John Stewart, and she had the case of what would be the case if John Stewart was in Egypt and doing medicine. So I liked the premise, and I said, and it was, it was kind of like a, a, an action of faith from both of us. She actually put her faith in the story, and I put her, my faith in her. And it took, uh, she, we thought that this would be a, a nine-month project. It turned out to be four years. There's another question here. I'm Leo Bosch. Uh, I got uh, one question. Um, in what way do you feel responsible f uh, now to tickle the giants? Uh, we tickle the giants in every way. I mean, like, if you actually try to fight for the way that you are putting your voice out in the media, like on what I'm doing, that, that's kind of like tickling. Tickling the giants basically is trying to change the status quo in, in different ways. It doesn't have to be like, uh, just like in your face, make a fun. I make a, a lot of jokes about Trump, so this is my ways in, back in, in America. So a lady for, for at last, two ladies. Hi. Two ladies, yes. <laughs> oh, you, okay. <laughs> um, so you mentioned earlier in response to an earlier question that there is a time to sort of sit back and think of your survival. Um, obviously, I'm saying this from a very privileged position because I'm not in that situation where, you know, there are security issues. Seems in that half of the people here are privileged. <laughs> <laughs> but um, don't you think that this is also a form of depoliticization that's also kind of a power tool to, you know, perpetuate the regime security there? So in that so, sense... So the question is, what can we do? Yeah. yeah so, I mean, I mean we, we, can, we could be all upset, but, like, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> right? And another question, sorry. Thank you. Uh, in 2015, the attacks on, uh, in Paris, Charlie Hebdo, did it, how did it affect you and your team? Did you speak about it or did it change anything? Uh, well, the attacks were, uh, we, uh, everybody talked about it in the Arab world and there was like a whole uh, campaign uh, for Arab caricaturists who actually did work on that. Um, I, we did not do it in the show because that is like we were we had other problems with within our uh, our 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 country in itself. But of course, it affected us, and in fact, and and kind of like every time that you have an incident like that, uh, it affects everybody living in Europe, because now everyone is thinking that, which is like really bad. Like everybody now, as an an Arab or a Muslim, or even an Arab, not even a Muslim. Um, come someone coming from the Middle East, they feel that they have uh, a duty to explain themselves, which is very unfair, which is really unfair, uh, unfair, because I didn't pull the trigger. I didn't push for that kind of rhetoric. I cannot be on, uh, on my toes every, every time something like this happened, explaining that we are different. They're obviously different. And it is just, it, uh, it is hard for us to just continue to, to try to speak to it out of guilt. I mean, you like you didn't have to explain the actions of the people who didn't Charlie Hebdo. Why would he have to explain it? You know, 
We are, and 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 I understand like the the the, the whole thing of like the anti, the, the the different sentiment here and the and people on the right wing using that, but it's just like I'm sick and tired to try to explain this. And why would I why would I talk this more than I would talk about like a certain thing happening in Latin America? It's it's a it's a violent action, and I'm sure that like I have presented myself as someone who do not condone this. Um, we do have a problem in the Arab world, uh, and the whole thing about this uh, clash of civilization, like many people like to say it, which I, I, I hate to to use that, but and and I and I say this a lot, and I'm going to say this again today. A lot of people come to me as if we are, of course, the representative of Islam or the Arabs or this whole thing. It's like, do you think that like Islam need to evolve? Uh, like Christianity evolved and my answer is did Christianity evolve it didn't evolve it's the same book it's the same scripture it is the Christian societies who took a, a, a decision to have to have a to go a different way politically so that was not a religious thing it was a political thing it was more of a freedom of expression our problem in the Arab world is not a religious thing it's a freedom of expression problem so if you have a really and and all in and every every time you hear someone who's trying to reform reform or speak about like uh, religious uh, text in a different modernized way they get put in jail not by religious authority but by military and police authorities many of those political uh, military um, figures they use religion as a, a as a as a first line of defense because if i make fun of god today are you going to make fun of of me as a military leader tomorrow. They consider themselves as custodian of religion. So the problem is not a reform of a certain religion, it is a reform of acceptance of, of, of freedom of expression in general. That's the biggest thing that we have. Yes. How many more questions would you like to take? Because let's do three. Three. Okay. And let's have uh, a, a mixture of, of, of uh, different people. <laughs> yeah. I know that, uh, yes. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Algeria. I would like to see, uh, yes, Algerian here. So, um, yeah, prima. Uh, Besem, uh, thank no, you I mean, for coming. Yes. <laughs> Anna Holendeo Masreya, but it's a mix. Uh, speak up. Okay. So, I have a question about how does it feel not to be living in Egypt anymore? And in what ways are you coping with your new environment, integrating in the new society, and trying to make it home for yourself, your family, and succeeding? It is, it is, of course, uh, much harder to live in a new society after, like, the, after the age of 40, you make these changes. I'm not 22 years old uh, anymore. I'm, I'm, for, I'm 40 something with a whole family with two kids. I'm trying to make it in a different, uh, in a different way. And uh, so it is hard, of course. It is interesting. I consider myself lucky that I'm, you know, trying to break this into this new uh, field. Very difficulty uh, with a little bit of difficulty, but it's going on. Uh, how do I feel not going back to Egypt? Uh, well, a lot of people ask this question in a different way. It's like, do you miss Egypt? And my answer is, the Egypt that I miss is not there anymore. That's personal. I mean, I don't think that I am... Um, I, 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 I think it's dangerous for me to go back, but even if the danger is lifted, I, I even don't know if I want to go back. I mean, I think there's a lot of trauma and a lot of... Uh, um, something that's too heavy on my conscience to go back because it's it's it is not like the same way I left it. So I don't know. This is something I have to answer when it is uh, available for me to go back. Yes. Thank you. I can take it. It's okay. It's okay. Um, no. No. I no. She's worried about like <laughs> if you can take the mic, you're gonna learn away with it. <laughs> So yeah, no she, Absaline is very, uh, she, when she comes to mics, she's very, it's such a dictator with the mic. No problem. Only no, Absaline will have to work with the mic. No Hi, Absaline, go ahead. Yes. I'm Noel from Algeria. Um, I would like to know. By the on, way, we and Algerians, people love each other. As long as there is no uh, football, as though there is no football involved. involved. I know. We I'm love each other. I'm married with an Egyptian man, so no worries. <laughs> yes. uh, my question is on, on a personal level. Because um, do you think you have been ever successful in your career? Because when you, th when you said in the, the, the documentary that you have been a doctor, but it was to please your parent. Yes. And then uh, you started something that you love, but it ended up badly. So do you think that you have been ever, and to be honest, 
personally very successful in your career? What, what career do you think? The media career the or the whole, doctor? Uh, whole career. Well, your I think if I, if I was not successful, career. I would not be sitting here with a whole room full of people waiting yeah. to hear my voice, you know? <laughs> I would say, but your question, I think what you should do, were you, sa were you satisfied? That is a, this, a, this, a, this, a, that's a different question. Because you could be successful and not satisfied. So I was a doctor. I had the uh, I had I passed all of my American exams. I already was accepted in a, in a in a hospital in Cleveland, which I think is successful. I I also passed all of the exam for the British uh, the the um, the the Society of, uh, of Royal Surgeons in, in in England because I was making England as another choice. So for that, as that was successful, but was I satisfied? No. Was I satisfied with medicine? I was not satisfied with medicine. Because you can be in a work that you're earning a lot of money, doing a lot of stuff, but you're not successful. I was very happy with my career in media. I think I was successful, and it was taken away from me, not because we had a bad rating, but it was taken away from me despite the, the good quality of the show. Uh, I'm, very, I'm more content and more happy with the media career because it's a way that you give... Uh, that I mean, it's a very, it's a big blessing to have your voice heard. So I'm more. So your the uh, the question to the ans the answer to the question that you didn't ask was I am more satisfied in that career than the, my previous career. Yes. Very special. Good evening. Thank you for coming to Amsterdam. My name is Sabri from Cairo, and I live here in Holland for a long time. At, uh, my question, can we dream on uh, that you might be the next president of Egypt in 20 years from now? <laughs> Would you, is it a dream? Is it a dream? Is it, is it possible for well, somebody so many, there, like you? Yeah, there's so, many there's so many ways you can serve the country, but like, I don't want to be, the, I think I have put my family into too much pain. And I think going into a political career, that's not, I mean, that would be too selfish. Uh, I, I, it is, I, I, don't, I don't consider, I don't want to be into political careers. I would love to be in a career where I make fun of people working in politics, <laughs> but not in a political career. But, and I think maybe sometimes if you're not a president, there's a way that you can affect the discourse more of, of affecting people. Because by the way, the minute I become president, no, 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 no. The minute I, I become president, the pop, I will, I'm not popular anymore. Uh, so, for example, who's your favorite Egyptian? Mohammed Salah, Abu Trika, whatever. If these people become president tomorrow, they're going to be cursed by everybody. It is this, a, a president is one of the most unpopular, uh, and, and I would like to be pampered by the love of the people. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we, we didn't hear, hear much of Dutch peoples, guys. Oh, you hear? Oh, she's, she's here in the first uh, law. I was, it's like, I'm being, I'm, be, I'm being racist and sexist, okay. It's yeah. kind of scary that you right away saw that I was Dutch, but yeah. Yes. Um, so my question is that you were saying that you think that the, the TV in Egypt has changed forever since the show. Technically, is, yes. Technically, yes. of course. Do you see any changes? Because you still have contact with the people that you work with back then and you see that they have start, are starting new programs. Are there changes going on right now where you can see like, this is where I can see that they actually have been like that, there is a revolution within the television, within media. In that well, sense. The, here's here's the thing. There, there's two different separate uh, things. Number one, there is something happening within the young, younger generation who are not accepting the same kind of propaganda anymore. I don't think what's happening in Egypt is uh, sustainable uh, because the, the 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 government, the authority there, is still using the same obsolete techniques of the 1950s and 60s. And you cannot do it in the age of the internet. Uh, but the other part of the question, which is my friends, they are also, also complaining about too much censorship about everything. It's not even about censorship of political content. It's like about being appropriate. Because again, when you have uh, uh, sometimes, uh, the, 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 when you have an authoritative, authoritative re the regime, it's not just about like what you cannot see politically. They could, as I said, they consider themselves the custodian of religion and the, cons uh, and the custodians of uh, uh, ethics. And these are all ways, these are all like, you know, hoops and, 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 and trenches and defense line in order to keep down uh, or, uh, or, or crack down on, uh, polit uh, on uh, freedom of expression. All right, so uh, we have one more question. And here's the thing. 
it has to be the best question of the night. If, if you think that you're going to answer the because, because if you're not, if this is not the best, I'm going to shame you and make fun of you in front of everybody. <laughs> so it has to be the best question ever. If you have the con confidence, and you cannot joke about it. You can't like, <laughs> no. It has to be a really good, thoughtful question that will give some people something to go home and think about. People are too courageous. This is the smartest audience I ever had. Yes. All right. Uh, that, that lady over there. Yes, because we didn't have a lot of women asking, and I, I like to make it equal as much as possible. Yes. Do you have travel advice for people who've never seen Egypt? <laughs> and I thought that would be as well. This is a question that you ask for a travel agency. But I will answer you if you have connections in Egypt, and I, I will answer this in, in wholeheartedly. Listen, if you have connections in Egypt, may, try to actually. Uh, arrange for a guide to be with you, especially in the pyramids, especially in Khamil Khalili, especially... No, seriously, because no, no, I'm, I'm going to give an honest advice, because there's a lot of hecklers and a lot of people who would just like make your uh, trip less than satisfactory. So for pay a, a little bit extra to have uh, an extra ride. And you can call us on 800 <laughs> I, I haven't been in Egypt for four years. Uh, it will be good for you, yes. All right. Okay, he's, he was he was very okay. I will give I give one more chance for the audience. <laughs> I'm already disappointed. Uh, okay. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I have a question, but I want to What? What the hell is yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah. I want to talk Arabic. I'm a Syrian. You have to be respectful of most of the people who only can do not, not understand Arabic. So you have to uh, to, to answer the. Uh, to, sorry, to ask the question I want to ask a question in Arabic a little bit. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so you can ask the question and, yeah, can, uh, and, and, and somebody can... And, and Absalin can translate it. I have Ayman Qattan from Syria, a professional cinema. The first question is... What is the first question? The first question is one question. Two questions. One question. Uh, ask the most important question. <laughs> Guys, Arabs, you need to be... This is the reason why we don't get visas. Uh, this is why we don't get visas to the West. We are not specific enough. Come on. Uh, One question. What is the plan for the promotion of the Yusuf in the Alqaf? All right. What is the condition for an, um, a TV host to be successful? I don't know because I didn't went to school to 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 study uh, media. My 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 story was very peculiar, and it just like went out of nothing. There were this was special circumstances in the revolution that gave us. I don't know if if the revolution didn't happen, maybe I wouldn't be successful. It is different. Anyways, very disappointed, guys. <laughs> very disappointed. But anyways, okay, I was going to say one more thing. Thank, uh, first of all, I really appreciate you guys coming out here. And uh, it's always nice to have a conversation with people, uh, uh, whether it was from my own country or from the Arab region that I really enjoy uh, speaking to. Uh, anybody from Tunisia here? Yeah. Tunisia? Labas? You Tunisian? No but no questions are done. <laughs> I gave you guys two questions. Uh, so, uh, 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 Tunisian, Algerians, Moroccan, 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 Moroccan. Yes, Moroccan. Hey, there's a lot of Moroccans here. Uh, I actually, I'm, 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 I'm very happy when people from Algeria, Moroccan, and Tunis, especially Algeria and Morocco. Actually, uh, I find them watching the show. Tun Tun Tunisia, like they, the show, they, they kind of close to us, but Morocco and Algeria, because they you have a kind of a different. Uh, dialect and, and you follow different interests and I, I, I feel very happy when I see people from these two countries especially watching the show feel very happy and privileged uh, so uh, thank you for so much <laughs>
And uh, I'm very happy when I see people from uh, Europe and from the, United, from the United States coming here to watch the movie for, about like a country they don't know much about or in, in language they don't understand. And I, I feel that. And of course, I'm very privileged to always see my fellow Egyptians coming here. And uh, it's kind of like it's a way to connect to each other for uh, a dream that we had one time. And uh, thank you so much for coming, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Welcome, Youssef. Okay, okay, let's make some rules. Okay, let's make some rules about pictures. Okay. Okay, so if you are in a group, please let's have a picture together. And we're going to have a picture together. Let's have one picture, not a selfie, a Snapchat, an Insta story, and another selfie, and another group chat. So let's just like be uh, considerate of everybody, and, have, and, I will, and I will not leave until I have pictures with everybody, okay? 